Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group and our toll-free number 800 951 The website at allamericangold.com. And welcome to Monday as the stocks are trying to have an update. We'll see. It's early. They're up 80. Uh, gold uh, was down early this morning. It's come all the way back. It's positive. Silver's higher for the day. Of course, tomorrow starts the Fed meeting. On Wednesday, we'll get the rate hike. Uh, and I guess, Jason, most people, uh, me included, pretty much think it's going to be three-quarters of a point. I think a lot of what happened will happen next will probably have to do with what Jay Powell has to say uh, at the press conference if uh, he's going to say that the pace of rate hikes is going to slow or if he's going to still be aggressive with them. We'll see. I, I kind of uh, of, of the opinion we're going to get 75 six weeks from now. It's going to be 50. Another six weeks from now, it's going to be 50 again because that's kind of what the Fed has said. And so far, anyway, uh, they don't like to go against what they've said. Obviously, really, most of us should be really upset right now. Because three-quarters of a basis point rate hike to, to get the Fed's funds rate to 3% is ridiculous when inflation is running. I mean, I know they're admitting to 8.3 or 8.4, but we, we know it's closer to 20. That's right, Joe. I, it's interesting. I, uh, I I search around different ways of, of looking for information as to what we're going to talk about every day, just like you do. And uh, over the weekend... <laughs> I saw this clip on it was on YouTube. It does clips of the mass media. I won't go listen to mass media, but on YouTube, I'll I'll, I'll get the shortened version. And this guy, Mark Mobius, have you heard of this guy? Uh, he says that in the future there'll be a two percent hike coming, and he he almost guarantees it. <laughs> that's on CNBC. Uh, that's kind of scary. Huh, I was going to say uh, Mobius is is a frequent contributor to the stock channel. Uh, to to CNBC and and so you you've got to you've got to give him uh, a little bit of respect. He he's a uh, a guy that has a a I guess a well known reputation at least in the uh, in the money world, if you will. Yeah, weird looking dude too. Looks like something out of a movie, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he has some uh, Doctor Evil type qualities. Uh, I'll say no way. Listen, I you know I I may not be the best looking guy in the world, uh, so uh, I don't uh, take a lot of shots. But uh, Templeton Emerging Markets Group, that's uh, his company. Again, this guy is uh, well, he's he's a rich guy. Yeah, I just found it interesting that they allow someone to say that on the, uh, one of the mass media channels. That must have sent chills down their spine, Joe, because that's that's exactly opposite of what they want him to say. Yeah, absolutely. They 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 uh, they have a very interesting take on things, and I I don't know why. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know why, but uh, they just don't want to accept the fact that uh, the Federal Reserve really created this problem and now has presented it in a way where there's really no good way out for them. They, they, they keep trying to hope and wish, and, and maybe if we get really, really lucky, uh, but, but the, luck has nothing to do with it. They waited way too long. Inflation got seeded. Look at what just happened last week, like with the rail strike, a 24% increase in wages. When you looked at the CPI, when you looked at the PPI last week, inside the headline numbers uh, weren't nearly as good as what they were hoping for, but the problem was inside the numbers was much worse than they wanted. You know, what we call the core numbers, because, you know, the central bank, you know, they like to throw away food and energy and all that stuff. But inside that number, those core numbers, much hotter than expected. Go back to when uh, the, 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 the first week of the month when we got the jobs number. And I told everybody the worst part about the jobs number was how much labor costs keep rising, which just means inflation is going to much, be a much bigger problem for a lot longer than people want to admit. 
Right, Joe. And then there's something else I was I was watching yesterday. Uh, a, a observation about the average American and how much they pay in taxes, federal taxes especially. And if you take out housing, you know, you leave in food and energy and, and all the most important stuff except for housing. Uh, the average American pays more in, in taxes than they do for everything else combined. So, so with inflation, your taxes go up because the cost of everything goes up. So the ta- you know the percentage stays the same. So it, it, it's you know when it comes to, to being taxed, it's getting far worse. Especially if if you get a raise like these guys at the uh, railroads, pushes you into a new uh, tax bracket, Joe, and suddenly you're getting charged a lot more taxes. Yeah, and again, uh, Jason brings up a great point. As your wages go up, your your taxes go up with it. Uh, we are collecting record amounts of taxes and yet it's done nothing uh to stop uh the the deficits from rising matter of fact this is the thing that i worry about as we as this slowdown picks up speed sooner or later these layoffs are going to pick up steam to the point where uh, all of a sudden, uh, that that big jump in, in tax revenue starts declining at the same time. We know what the government's going to do. They're going to try to pump it up. Matter of fact, uh, New York now, the latest, a lot of these states now, Jason, taking it upon themselves to add uh, to food stamp benefits. Uh, New York State alone says uh, over 3% more people on food stamps this year than last year. And, oh, by the way, we've got to send them more money than what the federal government is sending because they can't afford to feed families. That's a big problem. Take for Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800 951 Over the weekend, more warnings uh, for U.S. households uh, for this winter. Power bills for the winter. Are, are going to be uh, significantly more expensive. And, of course, I've told you, wait till October, uh, and primarily the end of October when the end of the strategic pumping of the strategic oil reserves, uh, energy prices for this fall and winter, uh, winter primarily going to get a lot more expensive. I don't know if it will get this bad, but in, in all over Europe now, just so you know, there's been these massive bailouts of their energy companies there. Uh, and, and they've created kind of this qua- these quasi-new power companies. Uh, and as an example, it's kind of re- reaching uh, havoc out there because a lot of big power consumers, they reach agreements with these energy companies. So they they have contracts that say, hey, you know what, uh, you're a real good customer and uh, and uh, we, we know you use a lot of power. We, we agree to cap your power costs at a certain level. You know, it's a trade-off, right? Uh, you create a lot of jobs. Hey, we're going to cap your power. Well, these power caps have been... Uh, disallowed. They, they've been thrown out, obviously, because, well, that company went out of business. Here comes the new company, a, a German baker. What about this guy's a baker. Now, now I'm assuming he's a, a fairly big size baker. Uh, he typically has a power bill that's just under $6,000 a month. Well, he just got his latest bill uh, it's a little higher Jason three thousand three hundred and thirty thousand dollars and they said you've got 14 days to pay uh, because the the they said that the agreement that they had reached is no longer valid it's just a little 1200 percent increase in their power bills and again uh, how does this work obviously the guy can't pay three hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars so so he goes out of business these people lose their jobs the power company doesn't get the money Jason I mean th- this whole thing is, is really so much more messed up than our media wants people to believe. Yeah, and when you bail out energy companies, you're just taking it and making the making it uh, run by the government. That's that's never going to be a good solution for energy costs in the future if the government just takes over energy, Joe. So that's it feels like that's kind of where we're headed. 
Yeah, they're talking about taking over the entire energy market, uh, getting rid of futures, getting rid of, of companies' ability uh, to hedge. Uh, of course, obviously, a lot of these energy companies, their job, they short the energy on purpose uh, and, and causing problems. A lot of them were probably on the other side. They're saying this thing could be a couple of trillion dollars. And I, and I bring this up because, you know, the Fed is trying to reduce its balance sheet sheet. Uh, last week, the story broke, the Fed is going to start losing money. Uh, and this is something we kind of expected to happen. Because remember, as bond yields rise, the previous bonds that lower yields become losers. They, they lose money. Uh, the Federal Reserve for years has been gaining money. They, like last year, as an example, they turned over over a hundred billion dollars to the government. Uh, it's kind of funny. They're the only bank that can't lose money, by the way. Uh, but but right now, the Federal Reserve is starting to lose money on their bond sales. So they're doing quantitative tightening. Uh, the problem is the bond yields are much higher now than the ones they were holding. And, and Jason, they're, they're expected, they could have losses of up to 250 billion billion dollars, depending on how long quantitative tightening goes on, but apparently, listen to this, this is such a great deal for them. It's amazing what we allow for these private bankers to get away with. This is why we've got to end this system. This is how corrupt it is. The Fed does not have to report the losses. Now, obviously, they're not going to give the government $100 billion. Right, so already uh, fiscal year 2023, which starts October 1st, the federal government's not going to be getting that big check, that big $100 billion check from the Federal Reserve. So the deficit's going to go up by at least that amount. Uh, but they're allowed, Jason, to hold losses on their balance sheet for as long as it takes, they can lose three, four, five hundred billion dollars, and they like, well, you know, we'll just wait. Sooner or later, eventually, we'll start making money again. Yeah, but it is the Federal Reserve. You know, do, do they really ever lose money, Joe? I mean, uh... well, that's it, right? This is my <laughs> point. Apparently, they don't. Even uh, when they do, let's go to uh, they don't. let's go to Monopoly Rule Eleven. This is something I used to do. Uh, I used to read regularly. Rule number eleven, Monopoly. What if the bank runs out of money? Some players think the bank is bankrupt if it runs out of money. The bank never goes bankrupt. To continue playing, use slips of paper to keep track of each player's banking transactions until the bank has enough paper money to operate again. The banker may also use quote-unquote new money on slips of ordinary paper. Isn't that kind of the way it works, Joe? That They're not going to lose any money. Kind of the way. Kind of the way. So don't, don't worry. Now, here's another problem. Mortgage-backed securities. So... Just so everybody knows, the Fed just stopped last week was the last of them buying mortgage-backed securities. They're supposed to be selling them, uh, the, the, and they're saying that the problem is going to be uh, that the Federal Reserve is not going to be able to unload these mortgage-backed securities and that they may have to end up selling more treasuries instead, which tells you everything you need to know about what's going on in the housing market right now. Well, maybe they're they're uh, counting on a whole bunch of uh, foreclosures so they can just take it and resell it. Maybe that's their plan. No, it's, it's really, uh, it's convoluted. It, it's complicated, but it's really not. Uh, essentially, what they're saying is, hey, you can't dump these mortgages onto the markets because interest rates will go even higher because of the fact nobody wants to buy them right now because most people tend to think, hey, rates are going to keep going higher, housing prices are going to come down, right, which means those, those bonds probably aren't worth what you lent them. Uh, and then on top of that, right, the loss and the difference in the interest rates uh, it, it really is a situation where I think this next story is really starting to make a lot of sense. This, this is out of London. For the ninth straight month in a row, 
the amount of silver stockpiles continues to fall in London. Now, London is the market. Most people, you know what? It's the one, probably about the one thing. It's the only thing that I know of that's coming off the top of my head where the shots don't actually get called here in America. We have the COMEX, uh, but the but in London, the, the, the metals market in London sets the pricing for gold and silver. Uh, and what's been happening, Jason, we kind of talked about the the billionaire in Texas. Uh, we've speculated, we think, uh, it's one of the Walmart heirs that's been stockpiling silver. But in these vaults in London, the amount of silver continues to fall and is now at a new time, all-time record low. Uh, as far as the amount of, of available silver in storage in London right now, Jason is not only is it an all-time record low. Uh, the the biggest problem now for the the markets is the the amount of supply is so little that they're in danger here of having to go. And there's a little one of these weird rules that they may have to go and. Borrow, borrow silver from the ETS. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> well, you have inflation, and then you have a situation where, uh, you, with rates raised being raised, uh, that well, you gotta have you have a recession. It looks like it could turn into a depression. Of course, people are going to just put their money, and of course, you know, rich bankers and, and millionaires are going to put their money where there's things, Joe. So it's the fact that it's at all time lows. It's I'm sure it's going to get a lot worse than uh, it is now. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, and, and the, the sad part is when you take out the the money that the ET, the silver that the ETFs have, and I don't know why they were it would be even allowed to count that silver as being part of what they could use. Obviously, in these contracts, there must be some kind of an agreement that in a pinch they could go to the silver ETFs and borrow some of that silver, but they're, they're actually only down to about 26,000 tons, uh, Jason, which, which is such a small amount. Uh, normally, normal levels, uh, you would see well over a million uh, tons of gold in these vaults. Uh, so it's, I mean, that's, that's scarcity type levels, right? Right, and and you're talking physical, right? So I mean, I mean, who knows how much paper silver's being traded around around those those few that are those few that are, uh, tons that are available, Joe. That's uh, it can get pretty scary pretty quick. It's, this is why you buy this stuff because at some point, Joe, the paper manipulation uh, will eventually be uh, brought out as the fraud that it is. So going back to November of last year. And you got to remember, the, the, this is an older. This re, this is a report uh, for the end of July. It came out August for July, so the last nine months. So you got to go to November 2021. Like I said, they've got about 28,000 tons left. They've had almost 8,000 tons come out in the last nine months. Uh, which essentially says, you know what, Jason, they, they've they roughly got, I don't know, uh, a couple of years at most uh, before they run out. I mean, think about like this. I talk about the strategic oil reserve. If we keep releasing oil at the pace we're doing right now, come September of next year, there would be no oil in the strategic reserve at all. Uh, could we imagine a, a silver market that has no silver in storage at all? And, of course, obviously, uh, we're bringing it up because it's laughable that silver's at n like $19.50 an ounce. Uh, obviously, according to the physical demand that's occurring in these silver markets, uh, hoarding is starting to take place, Jason. I mean, <clears throat> do you think it's possible, Joe, that we could see a spot price of silver at 20 but People are trading it physically for 150 bucks. You think that's <laughs> you think that's possible? The premium is just 100 dollars. You know, is silver spots only 20 bucks? Is that even possible? Would they carry it that far? I don't. You know, it's a great point. I, I will say that uh, I've been 
communicating a lot with our, our bullion banks, our wholesalers, and and one of them was like, "What's you know?" We we're talking about silver because I, I I just asked a simple question: Are mint, are mint, can mint fifty million ounces? Okay, and probably if you really pushed it, they could probably get close to sixty. Right, they go back to 2016, 2017, 2015. They were minting 40 to 50 million ounces. I think the biggest year was like 52 million. They're only minting about 30 million ounces. And what one of the bullion banks said is, listen, there's only four or five companies that really control uh, how much silver the U.S. Mint will order. Uh, the biggest one of them uh, is deliberately keeping the stockpiles low by, by saying, hey, only mint, you know, only mint 3 million ounces a month as an example, right? Only mint 3 million, even though they know we can sell 5. Only mint 3. And I'm beginning to wonder, is it just because, hey, the inventory levels in London would be depleted so quickly, we, we need to hold off to Jason Point. Raise those premiums. We'll be back. 800-951-0592. Uh, the other, you know, just wrapping up on this silver inventory, the pace has been increasing. The, 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 the higher rates go, it seems like, the more uh, whoever it is. And these are huge buyers. We're talking uh, about... Uh, vaults in London down a thousand to fifteen hundred tons a month, and, and gaining speed here. Uh, the, right now, it's anticipated that by the end of this year, you could see stockpiles may fall by thirty-three percent in a single year, which just kind of means, oh, Jason. Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out at this at this level uh, without more silver coming online. And this is the thing too; they're talking about uh, silver miners, and obviously, energy costs and interest rates affects their ability to get silver out of the ground. Doesn't look like there's any let up here. I think we're setting ourselves up for an epic short squeeze in silver. Uh, I just, how tight does the market have to get to get there is the only thing we really don't know. It sure feels like the biggest buyers of silver could be uh, putting a price on it, like, well, well, we'll sell it to you for 50, 55 bucks. But then when you go to sell it to them, well, we'll give you 25. Why, why does it feel like we're heading for that? That's how the richest companies and brokers and bankers of the world uh, corner the market on an asset and really just, uh, I don't know, put the screws to people on it. And then who's going to want to buy it then at those prices, Joe? If you can't sell it back at a reasonable price, you know, and there's no, and there's no supply, then what can you really do? You can't force anything but, but what their will is. Every bullion bank in the world is furious at the lack of supply. To Jason's point, uh, premiums are, are, are through the roof, and, and they're figuring out, hey, this, look how great this is for us. Yep. Uh, I, I know, you know, J.P. Morgan called us and said, hey, uh, don't order, cut your silver orders because we don't want people to know we're running out of silver. Uh, but what a great deal for those four or five uh, companies that are making a fortune on the spread between what they paper price it at versus what the physical price they're able to get. And Jason, right to the point, you know, that they, 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 they want to sell it at these sky-high premiums, uh, but they're not going to buy it uh, for anything close to those premiums. But not that it's bad. I mean, let's face it, uh, we're every, everything we're buying is over spot right now. Right, Joe. Before I came on to Patriot, I was selling gold and silver on the side. It was kind of my side hustle with a lot of other things. I was always trying to figure out a good way to make money. Uh, I was doing good in 2015, 2016, but then the guy I was getting it from, my, my margins went down to nothing. They basically just cut me out. You know, that, that's kind of how it feels like it's going on with with silver right now for a lot of dealers, which is, you know, you're being sort of, sort of chopped out because you're the one there's no supply or the cost uh, and, and the, the buy and sell is, is, is just off. 
And then, uh, you know, that was 2017. I, I kind of went on a place where I wasn't selling almost anything. And then Joe went on the air in 2018. I jumped in here and uh, I was able to sell it at a, a much better way than I was. That's kind of what I'm looking at, Joe. I mean, you know, just like with all small businesses, how many small businesses are going to get wiped out in, in bu buying and selling silver, for example? Are we going to be to the point where the government tries to take over this market, too? It would be a, a scary situation. Yeah, and again, this is just pointing out the disconnect of why things are broken. Price discovery is what the intent was supposed to be for Wall Street. And commodities fall, fall into that, right? It's supposed to be about price discovery. What the central bank has been trying to do, what they've done with the interest rate policies that they've had for, for a decade and a half, is to not find true price discovery. Look at some of the things I said today. Hey, you know what? The Fed's already having a problem. Quantitative tightening, it, it just started. And they've already got a problem because, uh-oh, if we allow true price discovery on mortgage-backed securities, it's going to cause a problem. So, I don't know, maybe we, we better not sell uh, these mortgage securities, Jason, because they don't want for true price discovery. Uh, the same thing is happening in the gold and silver markets. Believe me when I tell you right now, the same thing's happening in the energy markets. Because you think $82 oil is the right price of oil, you're nuts. I mean, Saudi Arabia already, listen, they won't sell anybody any oil uh, unless you're paying at least 100 bucks a barrel. They don't care. They're like, oh, we don't care. You can say what the, whatever you want on the paper price. This is what we're selling it for, Jason. That's right, Joe. That's right. I, uh, I lost my thought. I was listening to you. <laughs> but I agree with all of that. You, the, the price is the price. You know, if if, the, if America is going to not drill any new oil and, and 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 spill out all of their reserves, what motivation does Saudi Arabia have to drop their price? None. 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 And, None. and again, you start looking at even with all of this stuff, all with with the the fake discovery prices. Wall Street, listen, Wall Street. I'm sorry, well, Dow thirty thousand is not a real price. It's a real price today. But what I mean by not a real price is it's been manipulated with the help of the central bank. Because let's face it, it's a joke that we're sitting here with a Fed's funds rate of two and a quarter percent when they're admitting that inflation is eight plus. Now, they're going to go to three. Obviously, they should raise two or three points tomorrow, but they're not going to. Why? Because they don't want true price discovery. They want it to, because you know what they hope? Well, eventually, eventually, if we can string it out long enough, maybe, maybe 30000 will be the right price. Uh, it, but it really just doesn't work that way. Uh, now the Bureau of Labor Statistics comes out and says, hey, get ready. Uh, energy prices are on the, the move. You plan on, and this is here in the U.S., plan on prices. Being at, this is depending on where you live, a good one, 40% higher. In some places, Jason, when you're unlucky because your power grid is stressed, power bills could double. Yeah, I don't know how people can afford that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, are we talking all the coal and natural gas, all of it, I guess, right? All of it, yep, yeah, all of it. And, and again, natural gas, heating oil. Uh, obviously, depending on where, where, where you get your power. Uh, but according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you know, last week they said, listen, energy prices rose by the most going back to the 70s. And again, remember, they tracked inflation differently. I wonder what it would be, uh, really. So if they're already admitting, hey, it's going to be 40 percent, probably going to be a lot higher than that. That's my guess. Wow, yeah, that's that's a lot of money, man. That's that's going to be hard for a lot of families who are already uh, under the strain of inflation to have to uh, look at that this winter, Joe. Well, again, the difference between paper price and actual price. Take the radio news hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Last week we were running 
AU $20 gold pieces uh, for below uh, our regular $20 gold pieces. Uh, today we've got AU $5 gold pieces. We've got a hundred of them, so we don't have a ton of them, but we do. Got, we've got a hundred AU, which is almost uncirculated. These are going to be really sharp-looking coins. Uh, our regular price on a $5 Liberty today, $545. But now, Jason, for the same price, you can get an AU5 uh, at $545. If you buy 10 or more, you get them for $540 at 800 951 it's also less than the – we had a special on last week for 550 so it's even lower than that. Yeah, I mean, hey, uh, again, when when uh, the 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 lower end runs out, they tend to heat up the, the higher end, and that's just what, what's happening right now. Uh, some of these coins, these little uh, nicer-looking, better-graded coins, uh, they're, they're running these specials and, and, and making them very competitive. Take advantage. I mean, that's always a great thing. When you can get better quality and not pay more money for it, that's always a great opportunity. And then we're, we're in a, a, a time frame, I feel, Joe, uh, that's, that's going to slip right past a lot of people that are listening to shows and, and waiting for whatever reason. Uh, this is a great time to buy. The, uh, when these, these prices on metals move here, whether it be in the next few months or if it takes a year or two, uh, I've said it many times, it's better to be one year early on buying gold and silver than one, one day late uh, when the prices start to move. I mean, how many of you out there are listening – did I say the same thing in 2018 and early 2019? You could have bought a $20 Liberty for $12.50 or $13.50. You know, now a $5 Liberty on sales is $5.45. It's, it's, these things are moving. And don't sit around. I know a lot of you guys out there are really smart. You're on the metals program or you buy regularly. That's the way you're supposed to do it. But if you're somebody that's like sitting around waiting for a certain price point, uh, be careful uh, waiting for that bargain, Joe. It might not just happen the way you want it to. Well, and again, it's the same rules that, that, that apply, and we see this more and more now uh, with these markets because true price discovery is being blocked. Uh, these mega banks have too much power, too much control, uh, and, and they aren't allowing for the real price discoveries to happen. You can get away with that for a while. That's why I said, how do you go bankrupt? It's always gradual at first, right? You can hide it for a while. Right? Yeah, I gotta pay pay some bills late, or I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just stop paying. You know, first you you stop paying your student loan, and then maybe you stop paying one of your credit cards, and then uh, eventually you start paying your bills later and later, uh, it, and you're hiding it, and then all of a sudden it happens all at once. And this is what is setting up. This is what I think is setting up in these gold and silver markets incredible buying happening behind the scenes uh, the silver market uh, it, it's shocking how fast I'm mean, you're talking three four five percent drops every month in the amount that's available that's it that's a stunning pace uh, it, and Jason like I said they're covering up right now but but ultimately, when when the tide goes back out, you find out who doesn't have any clothes on, and all of a sudden, like you said, you, you're you're one day too late. That could be five, ten, fifteen, twenty bucks just like that. That's right, Joe. That's right. I mean, we have inflation. You know, we have inflation, and, and gold and silver did go up some, but I don't think it's near where it's going to be headed. And no matter what the uh, what the action is going to be on gold and silver in the months and the years to come. It will skyrocket upward. The the tricks in, that the uh, the controllers are playing on on the population is 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 just a ruse. You know, gold is gold. Money is an idea. The, the, man, the bankers, the Federal Reserve bankers, the central bankers, they they have all these different little tricks and these little things they make up because money is an idea. An idea can be corrupted. It can be changed. It can be used against you. But gold is just. A commodity it's a thing there's only so much of it it physically has to be pulled out of the ground they can have paper gold and, and silver and try to, to trick you on on the value of it but at some point Joe it just comes right back to where it's supposed to be because well, let's face it you know China has a central bank and Europe has a central bank and Japan has a central bank they all work together 
But at some point, everybody wants their piece, right, Joe? And then that's when gold and silver goes right back to where, it's, it's to where it should be. We're going to be he- we're heading straight for that, Joe. We're heading for a, a day of reckoning where gold and silver shine to the price they're supposed to be at. And you're going to be glad you held on to what you have now and are buying today, not next year, two years from now, Joe. Yeah, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The Dow, uh, the positivity's gone. Dow's back down. Uh, so is the S and P. So is the Nasdaq. Uh, National Association of Home Builders. Remember last month when we got this reading from the home builders, they entered into a recession. Anything below fifty, they came in at forty nine. Well, today the number's even lower. It's now forty six. Uh, that is the lowest going back over eight years a year ago. Just think about how big of a change this really is. A year ago, it was 76. Now it's at 46 and falling. Cur- current sales conditions fell another three points. Components that measure traffic of, uh, of prospective buyers Fell. The gauge that's, uh, of sales expectations fell. All four regions posted a drop in confidence. The biggest in the West, which dropped 10 points. Wow, I do, that's, and this confidence number, I'm just telling you, 10 points is ridiculously large. Uh, the South by 7 points. By the way, like 80% of the housing market in the United States is the South and the West. Uh, the Northeast and the Midwest both dropped by five points, respectively. So, Jason, more misery coming out of housing. Uh, kind of got the stock market back on its heels again. Paper Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, Paper Radio News Hour. Uh, today's special AU $5 Liberties. Uh, at 545, if you buy 10 or more, 540. Uh, 545, by the way, that's the price of our circulated five. So, Jason, going up in quality, not paying any more. Matter of fact, if you buy 10 or more, you get to pay less. Good way to go. It's a great way to, to uh, take what you got sitting there in the bank or under a mattress <clears throat> or wherever else you're keeping your cash. Uh, it's not, <laughs> don't hold on to cash right now. I know everyone needs a little. A little bit of liquidity when it comes to buying and selling stuff, having a little uh, emergency cash. I get that. But other than that, Joe, I don't don't have it sit in the bank. Get, get it in gold right now, right? Yeah, I mean, again, everything happens suddenly. We don't know. I don't know what is it, what's going to break these markets. Uh, is quantitative tightening going to break the market? Uh, remember, quantitative tightening already did that once. And already today... I mean, here we are, so September, and really right now, this last two weeks of September, this is when the pace is supposed to get to that $95 billion a month pace. And they're already talking about the cracks that are appearing in the tightening market, uh, namely talking about the mortgage-backed securities, uh, that if the Fed follows through, because they're supposed to sell, I want to say, like $30 billion of mortgage-backed securities. Which, and, and I know $30 billion is a lot of money, but and what we're talking about, not really. But even that small of an amount, Jason, is apparently going to be enough to upset the mortgage market, and all of a sudden you can see rates go even higher. And already we're well over six. We're supposed to get three-quarters of a basis point hike uh, on Wednesday. Uh, but, But, again, this could be something where the Fed actually makes the problem even worse. Could we see... Uh, a seven percent mortgage rate. I, I think. Listen, before twenty twenty one's over, or twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two is over. I think mortgage rates are going to be well above seven. Yeah, I think eight eight in December could could be possible, and then up to ten percent or more in twenty twenty three. I think they're going to keep pushing. They have to. They have to because the inflation is continuing, Joe. They ha- they have to. I don't know what their grand plan is because just like that Mobius guy said, they should do 2% in one tick. They should really, if they really want to attack it, they should go more aggressive. Listen, and, and get it over. This thing could already have been done, 
right? If the Fed had got in there and been raising two or three points for two or three meetings, I mean, we could already be where we need to be. Uh, this actually, you know, somehow they think this is this is better. This gradual thing is better. I, I think what's what's happened is it's allowed inflation to get even worse now. And that was the thing they didn't plan on. They really thought they were smarter uh, somehow than all the textbooks. They were smarter than history. They really thought they could get away with printing all this money. And the laws of economics have not changed, Jason, and it's put them into this corner. Or they want inflation, which I think there's uh, some part of their plan. I think they really want inflation. I think they want us to get used to inflation at a higher rate because this is the way they can kick the can down the road even further. Let's get these people used to 4 and 5% inflation yearly. Let's do, see if we can pull that one off. That's I think that's kind of where pull we're Pull that headed. one off, right? Hey, if we get, we'll get enough people to come out on TV and tell you how great 5% inflation is. Believe me, that's coming. Pizza Radio News Hour. God bless everybody.